Hello. Welcome to the North Carolina 2020 Virtual Fourth of July Celebration in Southport, North Carolina. I'm Liz Fuller from the Southport Historical Society. The year 2020 is significant from an historical perspective because it is the 100th anniversary of U.S. women attaining the right to vote. We had hoped to get together to celebrate this anniversary with a march similar to the ones that suffragists did over 100 years ago. But under the present circumstances, we decided it would be better to create a virtual parade. So at the end of this video, we will have pictures of current day supporters honoring women's suffrage and those who helped achieve it. But first, we'd like to share the stories of some of the citizens who helped to influence women's rights here in Southport 100 years ago. The first woman I'd like to tell you about is Miss Kate Stewart. Kate was a business leader in Southport and was the only woman on the Chamber of Commerce. She was a significant landowner and even sold the county land to build the jail on in 1904. But she is most well known for her ownership of the historic Stewart House Inn right on the edge of the Cape Fear River. The Stewart House was the place to stay when you came to visit Southport. Over the years, Kate hosted numerous judges, lawyers, and even a young Woodrow Wilson. Wilson was only a teenager when he stayed at the inn, but who's to say he didn't get the idea to become president right here when speaking to Kate? She may have been from a small town, but she always had big ideas. But I'll let you see that for yourself. Hello, my name is Kate Stewart. Nice to see you out here in my beautiful hometown of Southport today. Actually, I still think of it as Smithville since I was born here in 1844. But now it's a new day. You know, back in 1909, my friend Jesse Taylor said to me, why don't we start a civic club for the ladies here in town? And since I've always been interested in what's going on in town and a businesswoman since I run the boarding house, the Stewart House, that my mother left to me when she died. I decided I, I could do that. I have no husband, no children. So we began the Civic Club. I even made arrangements to get a steam boat to take us up to Wilmington to hear President Taft speak. All the ladies were real excited about that. And when we got back, we certainly had some meetings with the men leaders in this town to let them know what we had heard and also some ideas that we had to improve things in our town. Well, the beginnings of uh, the suffragettes, as we're called, to uh, have the right to vote have been very interesting and something I've been very proud to be a part of. Wearing my yellow rose here to signify that I'm all for the women getting the vote. It's taken 75 years of my life to get to this point and I'm very happy about that. So we're going to try to keep on making improvements here in town, and I'm delighted to be able to say hello to you today. Now, unlike Miss Kate, Jessie Stevens Taylor wasn't born in Southport, but like so many of us, she got here as fast as she could. When she was nine years old, her family moved here from Chicago. In fact, it was 1887 the very same year the town changed its name from Smithville to Southport. Everyone had big dreams that Smithville would become the port of the South. And you know, Miss Jessie never stopped dreaming of ways to make Southport a better place to live. Here she is to tell you about some of the things that she and the ladies of the Southport Civic Club accomplished. Hello. My name is Mrs. Jessie Stevens Taylor. You know, my husband C.E. and I, we weren't born here in Southport, but we sure did come to have a passion for it. We both contributed to the community in a lot of different ways. C.E., he was a lawyer and a newspaper man, and I was one of the founders of the Civic Club. I participated in the USO and many other committees too, and it was all a joy. We just wanted to do everything that we could to help Southport to grow and prosper and be the wonderful city that we knew that it could. 
One of the things that I'm most proud of, though, is the accomplishments of the Civic Club. For instance, the Civic Club was responsible for the first public library here in Southport. It was located right at Fort Johnston in the garrison. We had over 400 books that the ladies put together for the library. And I'm sure that Ms. Kate probably didn't mention it, but she was one of the primary donors. We had lots of other projects too. We had the first street lamp put in. We installed benches, we planted gardens, we sewed curtains for the school, we hand painted street signs so people would know where they were going. There were a lot of other things too, and they were all wonderful. But I think the most important thing is to know that when women work together, it can be very powerful. And it really was for the Civic Club, even before we had the right to vote. Jesse's right. The Civic Club did an amazing amount for Southport before and after women got the right to vote. In fact, they continue to work to improve Southport to this very day. You've probably heard of them. They're now called the Southport Women's Club. Those first 10 years of the club from 1909 to 1919 were particularly tough ones. We fought a world war and endured a worldwide flu pandemic. But after all that, in 1920, the 19th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States finally passed. After more than 70 years of struggle, women finally had the right to vote. The very first woman in all of Brunswick County to register to vote was a young woman named Anna Miller Davis. Anna lived at the corner of Bay and House Street. Her parents owned a very popular hotel called the Miller Hotel and Cafe. Hello, my name is Anna Davis. My parents moved here from Germany to the United States before me and my brother were born. We are very proud to be American citizens. My brother worked in a factory for the military in Pennsylvania. He died due to an explosion there. My father built a hotel in Southport. When he retired, me and my husband took over the business. My father was very invested in politics. Why, actually, one year he ran for governor. He didn't win, but I admire him for trying. In 1920, I became the first woman in Brunswick County to register to vote. I'm very excited for women to start voting, and I believe women will be able to make this country better. Of course, it wasn't just women who supported the 19th Amendment. Many men did, too. After all, they were the ones who voted for ratification. In the fall of 1920, Southport's Mayor Ruark worked with the Civic Club to help educate the women of Southport about their new voting rights. They held their meetings at the Army-Navy Club on Nash Street. Hello, everyone. Boy, it's another great day in Southport. I love those salubrious breezes. Don't they just feel wonderful? Say, have you ladies heard about the voting classes that our Civic Club is going to give in the next few weeks? The club has lined up a number of speakers, including myself, to talk to the women of Southport about their new civic duties as voters. Miss Anna Miller Davis has agreed to lead the program. Everyone knows that Miss Anna was the first woman in Brunswick County to register to vote. I'm sure she's going to do a great job and be a fine example to the rest of us. Well, I have to go over to City Hall now, so I hope you enjoy the rest of your your day and enjoy those salubrious breezes. Mrs. Davis, Mayor Rourke, and the women of the Civic Club did an excellent job with their speeches and civic education program. Soon, all of the ladies in the Civic Club wanted to get involved. Good morning. I'm Miss Florence Price. I'm retired now, but I used to be a school teacher right here at the Southport Graded School. In fact, I was the assistant principal for a while. Now that I'm retired, I spend more of my time with a group I helped start, the Southport Civic Club. In fact, I was just at a meeting this morning, and our intention is to go out and encourage women who are eligible to vote in this first election to register to vote. So we've decided to mount a campaign. We're going to go door to door and encourage women to come to get themselves registered. 
How about you? Are you registered to vote? If you're not, why don't you just come with me? We'll just walk right down here to the courthouse right on Moore Street and get registered. It's very easy. Come on, let's walk. As you can see, everyone in town was excited about the new amendment and about women having the right to vote. But as exciting as it was, there were still some members of the community who were left out. You see, the laws changed in 1900 and African American men were no longer allowed to vote in North Carolina and most Southern states. The 19th Amendment, which allowed women to vote, caused some confusion about the rights of African American women in North Carolina. Would they be allowed to vote too? Every county handled it a little differently, but in Brunswick County, the answer was no. So now I'd like to introduce you to Anna Clements, a Southport woman who wasn't interested in taking no for an answer. Hello, my name is Anna Clements. I have lived in Southport in my whole life and I was born and raised here. I am a nurse. I have nursed about almost every single home in this town. I go to church, I pay my taxes, and I don't cause any trouble. Now, since women have the right to vote, I would love to vote. So I went to the register to the courthouse, but he said my reading or writing did not suit him. But in fact, no black man or woman was able to suit him. So I think he's mistaken. So I'm going to write a letter to the National Women's Party in Washington, DC, and I'm gonna see how I who registers to vote. Anna did write a letter to the National Women's Party. In fact, she had a correspondence with the secretary of the party, Miss Emma Wold. Unfortunately, the Women's Party was not able to help Anna. They advised her to be patient until they could get the federal oversight law passed. It would be another 40 years before the Equal Rights Law passed in 1965. Anna Clemens did not live to see that day. But her determination and the fighting spirit of so many women and men helped to secure the right to vote for all U.S. citizens. We hope that you've enjoyed hearing this bit of Southport history. If you'd like to know more, please contact the Southport Historical Society through email, on our website, and our social media channels. And now, it's time to celebrate with our virtual parade in support of the 19th Amendment and the women's right to vote. See the host advancing from the west, they're marching. Thousands of the women armed with voting strength. See a bow of promise for the sky to arching. Read its glowing message, power has come at length. Women want the vote, women want the vote to bring in prohibition. Women want the vote, women want the vote, women want the vote to make a sober nation. Women want the vote. to the God of heaven for the weapon needed to aid them in their fight. Now the answer cometh and the boon is given. They will have the ballot to gird them for the right. Women want the vote. Women want the vote to bring in prohibition. Women want the vote. Women want the vote. Women want the vote to make a sober nation. Women want the vote. 
see the host advancing, women want the vote.